Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to The Evening Reader. My name is Priscilla. It's been a minute again. Uh, I had hoped to be here earlier this week and I'm feeling pretty lucky that I'm maybe going to get this up today on Wednesday. I may, I'm recording it on Wednesday. I may not get it up until Thursday and it may be the only thing I'm able to get up this week. Uh, yeah, it's, the universe is not cooperating and I thought things would sort of start to slow down in December, especially with work, because typically in the past, at least the last two weeks of December are somewhat quiet. And instead this year work has decided that it's going to increase <laughs> all the way through the end of the year. So that's something. And then I am still chugging through my Dutch exams. I have taken three. I took one on, I took the third one on Monday. I have one next Thursday, my speaking exam. <laughs> that one makes me so nervous. And then I have a culture exam at the end of the month on the 29th, on the very last possible day. <laughs> so, so good times. Anyway, December. Let's talk about December. Let's talk about December reading plans. Let's not worry about November. Hopefully I'll get to come back and talk about that. Um, but I wanted to talk about what I'm doing this month. And yeah, I am doing Remember December. And this is an event, a December event. I'm sure you probably already know about it, but just in case you don't, this is being hosted by Roz at Skelly Danling about the books um, and novella, Bokens Books, Criminali Blog, Miss Reads a Lot, Erin Facer, and Shelley Swearingen. Did I leave anybody off? No, I didn't. <laughs> So thank you, thank you to the hosts for doing this. Uh, and the prompts for this event are to reread a book you have basically forgotten, reread a book to find out how you really feel about it, and reread a book in a different way. And so I have already started on the third prompt, which is reread a book in a different way. And for that prompt, I am actually listening to my name is Lucy Barton on audiobook. Uh, I think I mentioned in my last video that I have now with my Spotify subscription that I have, this is not sponsored, this is not a plug, but with my uh, Spotify subscription, I get 15 hours of audiobook time a month or billing period. I'm not exactly sure how that works. And um, so I decided to listen to My Name is Lucy Barton, and I'm probably about 40% of the way through, and I'm really, really enjoying listening to this, um, surprisingly, because audiobooks and I don't get along, but I think I also mentioned in my last video that I found the hack, which is if it's a book that I have already read, listening to it actually is something that I can stick with it, I because... I'm already invested in the story. I was really kind of hoping that uh, Laura Linney would be the person who was reading the book <laughs> because I know she did the one woman show. And I was also hoping that I could find that on YouTube, but alas, there is, it's not out there. It's not available. Maybe someday it will be. Um, but yeah, I don't remember the name of the woman who is doing the narration. I will put it in the... Uh, but she's doing a fantastic job. And I have to say that hearing somebody reading in Lucy's voice, because my name is Lucy Barton, is obviously in the first person. It's narrated by Lucy um, and is really lending a great deal of depth uh, to that book. And this is probably, I have read it originally on an ebook. I have a physical copy, but I cannot find it. I think I must have loaned it out. Um, so I have read it in both of those formats. And so I thought that I would try listening to it because the book that I have for the reread re a book to find out how you really feel about it is O. William, uh, which is 
not the second book in the what's called the Amgash series, I guess. Uh, that is Anything is Possible, which is a, a con uh, their connected stories um, about uh, Amgash, Illinois, or Amgash, Illinois, not Illinois. <laughs> Sorry, it's that kind of day, um, which is Lucy, Lucy Barton's hometown. Um, this is about Lucy's ex-husband, um, William, who we do meet in Lucy Barton. And uh, in this book, they are, they have been long divorced, both remarried, and now are finding themselves uh, both single. And William finds out something about his past. And um, Lucy sort of accompanies him on this journey. And they sort of re- I wouldn't say they reform a relationship because it seems like they have a relationship. I didn't particularly care for this book. Um, well, I liked the book. That's not true. But I didn't particularly care for Lucy in this book. And it made me hesitate on picking up the last one, the most recent one, I should say, um, which was Lucy by the Sea, which I read uh, in October, no, the end of September, excuse me, the end of September, and I really loved and also want to reread. I'm not using that book as part of my um, Remember December um, reading, but I am hoping that I can get to all three books, but at the very least, I will get to O. William, and, um, you know, I will read reread Lucy by the Sea, whether it's this month or maybe early next month. That's the plan because I really feel like I see a new dimension of Lucy. Um, I really am enjoying her character a lot more with this sort of rounded out view of her. So I'm looking forward to experiencing that book again and really hoping that this one becomes a book that I feel better about. So, <laughs> uh, for the other prompt, reread a book that you have basically forgotten. Now, some for some reason, I thought this was like a book that you had loved and basically had kind of forgotten and wanted to reread to see how you feel about it. So I kind of combined this the, the first two prompts in my mind. But I have a stack, I have a pile of possibilities for uh, the first prompt. So reread a book that you've basically forgotten. So. I have not totally forgotten these books, but they're books that at one time I really did love and I, I'm so far away from them now. I haven't read them in a while, in some cases a very long time, and I really want to see how they hold up. Um, the first one is The Liar's Club by Mary Carr, which I think I first read in 1995 or 1996. Uh, so that was quite a while ago. Let me see when this was. Yeah, this was, this is 19, copyright 1995. Um, yeah, so I think I read this maybe in 90, I probably read it in 96 actually. And this is a memoir of Mary Carr. Um, I also have read the second book sort of, or second memoir that she wrote, uh, Cherry, which, uh, Kind of follows up this one and I think there's a third one um, I already I also have her book the art of I think it's the art of autobiography which is a fantastic book about writing um, memoir or the art of memoir I think it is sorry <laughs> I'm batting a thousand I'm doing so well <laughs> but this is one of my options this is one of my picks um, and I will I was gonna say I would read the blurb but there is no blurb there's just a whole lot of praise um, but this is about her childhood in texas um in southeast texas and her and her relationship with her parents and so on and so forth really really good book um the second one is called uh south of the big four by i have to look ron kurtz <laughs> and Let's see. Oh, sorry, Don Kurtz. <laughs> Ron, Don, ah, whatever. <laughs> um, and this is, it says, at age 30, Arthur Conison has returned to north central Indiana to work family land, now farmed by another. 
and to find direction in an America whose center no longer holds. I remember just thinking the this book was a really beautiful story. The language um, was beautiful. Uh, the writing was really strong. Um, and I have reread this. I reread it, but it was a long time ago even that I reread it. So I originally also read this probably in the mid 90s. And yeah, so I'm, it's a book that I have recommended to people and have said is a really great book. So maybe I should be more careful. Is it still a great book? I don't know. I'm going to have to see. Maybe this will be the one. Um, the next one that I picked up uh, that to possibly reread is uh, Margaret Atwood's The Robber Bride. I got this for my birthday, I believe, in like 1992 or 1993. And I remember reading this like in one sitting practically let's see what does it say here for the date 1993 1993 and this is this is this was like pretty much just published because it doesn't have any blurbs or anything on it and yeah i remember reading it in one sitting and really loving it and i think i read this one before i read cat's eye which is actually my favorite margaret atwood um, and it says, let's see, from the extraordinary imagination of Margaret Atwood, author of the best-selling The Handmaid's Tale and Cat's Eye, comes her most intricate and subversive novel yet. Roz Karis, Charis, I never know how to say that name, Karis, I think it's Karis, C-H-A-R-I-S. <laughs> you can Google it, dummy. Uh, and Tony, uh, war babies all share a wound and her name is Xenia. Xenia is beautiful and smart and hungry, by turns manipulative and vulnerable, needy and ruthless, the turbulent center of her own never-ending saga. Xenia entered the lives when they were, entered their lives, the, the lives. <laughs> Xenia entered their lives when they were in college in the 60s. And over three decades, and over the three decades since, she damaged each of them badly, ensnaring their sympathy, betraying their trust, and treating their men as loot. Then Xenia died, or at any rate, the three women, with much relief, attended her funeral. But as the robber bride begins, she's suddenly alive again, sauntering into the restaurant where they are innocently eating lunch. So, I don't know. Could be interesting. I'm, I'm curious to, to find out. I remember that one of the, the, uh, one of the protagonists, Tony, is a professor of military history which I just, I don't know why, that is that is the detail that stuck with me. Like, to the point that I think that she has a model in her, um, she has like a model of a battle in her office <laughs> that she has little pieces that she can move around to reenact the battle. Anyway, the things that stick with us, the things that we do or don't remember. The next one that I remember that I loved this book and I do, I love this author and I've read plenty of books by her and I have more recent books by her on my shelf to read. And that is, um, this is The Beat Queen by Louise Erdrich. Um, I bought this used back again in the 90s. I bought this at um, Recycle Books and Records in Denton. This was published in 1986, it says. So I read it sometime, yeah, in the early 90s. And it says, uh, now from the award-winning author of Love Medicine comes a vibrant tale of abandonment and sexual obsession, jealousy, and unstinting love. On a spring morning in 1932, young Carl and Mary Adair arrive by boxcar in Argus, North Dakota. Orphaned in a most peculiar way, Carl and Mary look for refuge to their mother's sister, Fritzy, who, with her husband Pete, runs a butcher shop. So begins an exhilarating 40-year saga brimming with unforgettable characters. Ordinary Mary, who causes a miracle. Seductive Carl, who lacks Mary's gift for survival. Sita, their lovely, disturbed, ambitious cousin. Wallace Pfeff, a town leader bearing a lonely secret. Celestine James, a, a mixed-blood Chippewa, and her daughter Dot. Theirs is a story grounded in the tenacity of relationships, the magic of natural events, and the unending mystery of the human condition. I just remember really loving this. I want to say that this is part of, some, of something like a trilogy. 
with love medicine and then another book um but i'm not i'm not entirely sure about that but the bee queen is in the running okay um the next one is a thousand acres by jane smiley uh this also another one that i read in the mid 90s i guess i guess i'm feeling 90s i don't know uh i guess i'm wanting to go back to the, to the 90s for some reason or pick up some books that I read back then and, and really loved. Um, a thousand acres, a piece of land of almost mythic proportions. Upon this fertile, nourishing earth, Jane Smiley has set her rich, breathtakingly dramatic novel of an American family whose wealth cannot stay the hand of tragedy. It is the intense, compelling story of a father and his daughters, of sisters, of wives and husbands, and of the human cost of a lifetime spent trying to subdue the land and passions it stirs. Uh, I believe this is actually supposed to be a modern retelling of um, King Lear. So uh, I just remember, this was the first Jane Smiley novel that I ever read. And I just remember being really blown away by it. So it's a national bestseller. <laughs> How could I not be blown away? <laughs> That's also in the running. This is my pile of possibilities. Maybe I'll make you guys vote. I don't know. Uh, and then the last one is another one that I read. Guess when? <laughs> you do the math. Um, in, in the Lake of the Woods by Tim O'Brien, who wrote The Things They Carried. Um, this was really, really dark and very good. And, oh, what is this? Oh, I've just got some random... <laughs> So random. I love that when you find random things in your own books. A subscription card to the Atlantic Monthly. Back when it was the Atlantic Monthly. Monthly, and then something about some kind of some kind of weird horoscope thing. I don't know what that is. I don't know that that's mine. This is a used book, so. I bought this at Recycled Books and Records and didn't also. Uh, let's see. So, uh, this is, does not have a blurb. But if I remember correctly, this is about a couple who are at a cabin in the woods and the wife has disappeared. And yes, I'm looking, I'm looking in the wrong place again because I'm looking at the book cover. The wife has disappeared. Um, and we're left with the husband telling the story of her disappearance. If I remember correctly, I may not be remembering that right. Anyway, those are my remember December picks. I'm pretty excited. Po I mean, they're my pile of possibilities, I should say. Um, let me know if any of those sound particularly interesting to you, uh, because maybe I will let that drive my decision. Um, I don't think any of them would be a mistake, but I'm really curious now to know how I feel about all of them. So I don't know what that's going to, how that's going to upend my life <laughs> for, <laughs> for 2024. Okay. Okay. So let's, let's shift gears. Let's shift gears because um, on Instagram, Rick McDonnell announced that he is bringing the TBR spin back. And so I am planning to participate in the TBR spin. My poor kitty cat is like, mom, don't pile those books where I'm trying to sleep. Move the books. Move the books. <laughs> the cat is sitting where I wanted to sit and film got a real problem with light. It's going to be like this unless I can film in the afternoon. Um, but that's just really hard to do. It's hard to film during work hours. So I have to wait until I'm kind of all done with everything and then make my videos. <laughs> and we just have lamps and dim lighting and high ceilings. And so it's very hard to get the light right. Anyway, anyway. Okay. So the TBR spin. I'm very excited about this because since I'm doing the read what you own challenge, um, you know, it's daunting. It's daunting to look across however many books that you have on your shelf. Say if you had like 400, 400 or so books um, across your Kindle and your shelves, 
most of my books are on my Kindle. Um, it could be daunting to figure out what you want to read next. And I mean, I have some books that I'm probably going to read regardless, you know, but yeah, uh, it, I, I could use some help picking out something from that shelf. So TBR spin. So I went and watched um, Rick's original video as he suggested we do in his Instagram post. And I will link that video uh, down below if you're interested in participating. I think the spin happens on Friday. Um, and uh, these are the, it's not really, there's not really any rules per se, except, you know, there's some guidelines. There are some things that, well, no, there are some rules. There are some things you're supposed to do. But what Rick suggested, uh, what you do is you pick 20 books from your TBR, from your shelf, basically, or I guess from your TBR, I guess if you had a want to read list, you could also use that. Um, and you pick 20 books and he suggested, you know, sort of sorting them into four or five categories um, that, you know, kind of maybe have themes uh, just to kind of make it more interesting and maybe make it a little easier to kind of group things and pick things out. And then um, on Friday, uh, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> then you have to uh, announce your list. You you number them one through 20. You put them to, all in a list. You number them one through 20. And then um, you have to say what they are. You have to share the list with the public on Instagram, on YouTube, on whatever. And then on Friday, he will do the spin. He has a little spinning wheel. He will spin the wheel. And then whatever the number is, that's the book you read. And the whole point of putting your list out there is so that you kind of, you can't cheat. You can't, you can't, you know, pick up a book that you really, really want to read first and say, oh, oh my, oh goodness, this was my number 18 or whatever number gets picked. So, okay. So I am going to share my list. I'm going to share my list. I'm also going to put it in the description box below. I am, um... not going to go through every single, um, every single, <laughs> okay. I'm not going to read the blurbs for all of these books because it's, it's not like I'm going to, you know, I'm going to read all of these eventually, but I'm just going to say what the books are because I think that'll probably be the easiest way to, uh, to do this. So, and like I said, I'll put the books down below. Okay. So here the, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Okay. All right. So, all right. My first category is new to me. So these are books that I bought very, very right near the end of, you know, the time we could buy books before we started the read your own books challenge. So probably within, I would say like the last few months of before this challenge started. So, uh, the first one is Paul Murray, the bee sting, which I'm probably going to read anyway, but I'm going to put it as, in as part of the spin. <laughs> this is a book that I'm just super excited to read. These are all books that I'm so excited to read. So anything that I can do to like prompt me along, <laughs> well, I really want to do that. The next one is Fane by Anne Marie McDonald. I think this is shortlisted for something, isn't it? Is this shortlisted for the, was this shortlisted for the booker? Oh, anyway, I don't know. I, I heard um, Eric Carl Anderson talk about this one. So this is a big chunky book. Um, Do Tell by Lindsay Lynch, who works at Ann Patchett's Bookshop, Parnassus Books, and this just sounds kind of fun. Uh, I'm not supposed to say what the books are about, am I? Well, it's about uh, a woman who goes to Hollywood. She wants to be an actress, I think, in the 1930s or the 1940s, or maybe the 1950s, and she just, she realizes that she's not a good actress, but she's a great gossip when she becomes a gossip columnist. Sounds kind of fun. Um... Collected Stories by Lydia Sangren, um, or Collected Works, excuse me, not Collected Stories, Collected Works. <laughs> As I'm looking right at the book title, <laughs> hello. Um, 
yeah, this one has been praised all over all over BookTube. Um, Sean, the book maniac in particular, um, said that he really loved this. So really want to get to that one. Um, and then um, one, I have one on my, I have to look at my uh, tablet here. Um, the Family is Chierto by Ruben Deglado. And that's, uh, it's a multi point of view, multi-family saga that, and I'm probably not saying the name right. So I, my apologies. And um, yeah, okay. I'm having, I'm, I'm having, where do I look issues again? <laughs> okay, well, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. Those are my five choices for new to me, for new to me. Okay. The next section that I have is mysteries. Okay. Uh, and I have the skeleton key by Aaron Kelly. Yes, that is uh, here on my tablet. I would love to like just hold my tablet up and show you these, but I'd have to like scroll through and then like get to the cover. And so I'll just, I guess I'll just pop them up or whatever. Um, the next one that I have, which I just happen to have here with me is um, the Satipur Moonstone by Sujata Massey, which is the second book in this Sujata Massey series. Massey series. <laughs> the lights yeah the lights changed the lights changed um yeah because my my husband does that when uh when he to let me know he's getting ready to come home from squash so just one minute just one minute okay <laughs> we're back so as i was saying this is the second in the series um, that was the, um, Praveen mystery. Uh, I read the, oh, the first one. <laughs> I read the first one. The Widows of Malabar Hill. Yeah, that was terrific. I read that this summer. So this is the second one in that series. Um, the next one is Jacqueline Winspear's Maisie Dobbs. Uh, Conviction by Denise Mina. I know that um, Angelia said that she really likes Denise Mina. I had the first two books in that. I think there's. I think that's going to be a trilogy. So that's the next one. And then a book by C.J. Sansom that has been on my tablet forever, or on my. Oh God, I went to sleep. <laughs> This is truly a disaster. Let's see. CJ Sands. <laughs> it's the first book in the Matthew Charlotte series, and it's called Dissolution. So that's that is that's my next five. Okay. The next five after that are um story collections because I have a lot of short um story collections and I have not been um really reading them or focusing on them. So the first one is called Volt, and that is by a writer named Alan Heathcock. That this was a book that I just happened to like get on Kindle sale. It looked interesting, so I thought I would buy it. Um, the next one is <laughs> bear with me, bear with me. Is um, six stories, six stories by Matt. Wesolowski. No, I don't. Nope. I don't want to start reading it. No, thank you. <laughs> Matt Wesolowski. <laughs> and these are connected stories. One body, six stories. Which one is true? Okay. Uh, the next one is um, Going to Meet the Man by James Baldwin. Magic for Beginners by Kelly Link. And then Mothers Tell Your Daughters by Bonnie Jo Campbell. So those are my five short story collections that are going on my TBR spin list. And then the last category is nonfiction because I wanted to make sure I've got a lot of unread nonfiction and I wanted to make sure I get it on there. I have H is for Hawk by Helen McDonald. Um, Lady from the Black Lagoon. I am not sure who that's by. But that is, that looks like a really fun book. Um, let's see, by Mallory O'Meara. 
And that is actually about the woman who created monsters back in the 1950s for the Hollywood studios and just basically never got any credit for it. Um, oh, a book by Sarah Vowell. I do believe The Wordy Patriots, uh, which I had on my list for Shorty September and never got to. So that would be one. Also, Thomas Cahill's How the Irish Saved Civilization, which was also on my list for some event back this summer. Maybe it was Shorty September. Maybe it was something else. That's on the list also. And then um, Travels with Charlie by John Steinbeck. So, okay. I will have all those books uh, in the description box. I will have them numbered in the description box so you will know. I won't be able to cheat. Um, I will put them in the description box even in the order that I share them with you here today because that's how I have them written down on my trusty little notepad. And yeah, and so I think that's it. I think that's everything. Ah, oh, okay, so I hope to be back next week um, with at least one video. I have the nonfiction journey tag to do because uh, Grix tagged me to do that tag. And I think that would uh, dovetail nicely with my November reading. I want to do my November wrap up because November turned out to be a really terrific reading month after <laughs> sort of the chaos of, I don't know, it just, it just turned out to be a really good month. So I'm looking forward to talking about that. And then, um, yeah, after that, I'm hoping to have at least gotten through, definitely will have gotten through, my name is Lucy Barton and maybe O. William, and so can talk a little bit more about Remember December, and I will post in the, uh, in the community, I'll, I'll, my, the community space or whatever it's called, I will post whatever my book is for the TBR spin, and then I think I think you've got two months to read it. I'm not sure if the TBR spin happens every month or if it's every two months. Anyway, anyway, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Let me know what you think about any of these choices. Let me know, especially uh, for the Remember December books that I shared with you, my pile of possibilities, if there's something that you would find particularly interesting. Maybe if there's some kind of majority out there, I'll just pick that book, or if not, well. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what's going on with you because it's been a while and I'd love to hear from you. And I thank you so much for being here and I hope your week is going well. Okay. I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.